everything. We run by the absolute failure of the economic strategy. We take the micro and challenge it and apply it in a new way to the economic strategy. So, if you have a piece of the industry, you can see the street and the street. Cioè, la sua teoria è questa, da un suo cammino, non è un antico rito, però non c'è niente di altro. Ha il suo lavoro, però non c'è niente di altro, e questo è il suo lavoro. Cioè, la sua teoria. Io ho già fatto una discussione di due maggiori vittorie in questo momento. In discussione di forma politica, as well as profili as well as and the Commission's major work that is in memoriam. We just have a quick and brief idea about the background of the Victorian age. As these two poets were writing from 32 on, which is regarded as in the treasure, which is also Marx and Epo, just because of the passage of the first reform bill. It might strike to us that because of the industrialization in the locomotives, the trains running on the rails, and industries and mechanism that was really booming, in a certain age, it is naturally the man who goes mechanic not only by head, but by heart. And this reflects in uh, most of the works that um, we regard as the representative of the age. So from 32 on, um, from the passage of the first reform bill, and uh, Carlyle, who is a major figure, who, who writes uh, his um, Chartist, uh, first charter, and that goes with the Chartist movement. What we have to account here is that there were thinkers, by the age, which had more than there were thinkers who were uh, thinking in, uh, their, uh, with the view of their socialist or socialist aspects. And in the uh, reform bill, it is mainly the electorate or uh, when uh, the reform was done in case of who could work in the times. So, by and by, we find that from 32 on to 1900, more and more people got uh, the right to work. And during the beginning, it was only the limited class that, that could work. And then it is the upper class in the urban areas that uh, were part of the uh, working section. And then there was a demand by the working class too, and they also got their rights by the end of the century. Even the women got their rights, but too later in the 20th century, the first decade of the 20th century. So this was the development in case of political reforms, and that is the right to work. And there were also uh, reforms in case of the factory tax, the very condition of the labor class, and uh, a few humanists, few socialists who could, uh, who really drew the attention of um, the parliament and could bring about the reforms in their own way by the charter that they came up with in Carlisle to influence in the politics as well as, well as the society then through these thoughts. And charter is also once again to do with the whatever reformation was going on socially and politically. And the reign of Queen Victoria, which um, in fact uh, was a very long period, almost 53 years long reign from her coronation to uh, back in 1900. Uh, where she celebrated her jubilee in 1997. So, when you take this long span, it is the people who had uh, really once again had all the faith in authority and uh, with this authority that ruled for such a long time, naturally, uh, murdered themselves not to oppose, not to question, or not to 
result. So there was no revolution during uh, the Victorian times. And Victorians thought that they were the best. And they were the rulers of the world. And they ruled over almost 70% of uh, the colonized world. So this is how um, the Victorians, the Englishman, thought of himself as um, the proud dress that um, were born rulers. And the authority, as we uh, see also in the in case of India, but it is in 1857 that we come under the Victorian reign, and directly under the empire. Till then, it was only a company or a businessman that they were taking over and colonizing India. So, uh, this is in fact uh, where Englishmen flourished and wealth from all over the world was pouring into England and the industrialization and the mechanic uh, way in which the people worked and the laborers whose condition was solid uh, was one side of the coin. So on one hand it was all uh, wealthy class um, but was all uh, proud while on the other there were the rural uh, population who were shifting to the urban areas and uh, they too were molded in such a way that they could not question or there was no time to question. It was uh, the question of their existence to win, uh, win their, win their bread and butter. And in such a case, in such a condition, uh, you have, uh, their case was all helpless and it was parallel and the later thinkers who could draw attention to uh, their conditions and bring about um, the expected uh, reforms through parliament and through the consciousness of the people that they could think, uh, they could again uh, influence. So it is a whole age, it is a stretch of time that never questions, that never revelated. And this is also predicted in the fiction, especially in fiction, where the problems are there and presented in a very realistic way. Take the case of the major figure that is Dickens. So, uh, what we find is that he began all uh, while reading his uh, novels, his fiction. We find that it is very happy, very truly uh, the realistic uh, picture of the age and when he takes us into the workshop and to the infant or child characters that suffer in the factories, in the workshops and the most realistic um, experiences even of the writer in his own lifetime and he can really move the readers but all his works what I want to draw your attention to is that not a single work comes uh, with any solution. It is always compromise. So it's an age of compromise. It's an age that doesn't give a solution or doesn't try even to go to find solutions. It's a straight hand. And it is um, the, the question that is presented, but no answers, so to say, and that are that as rulers of some revolutionary uh, character in any works, even in the fictional works. So, when you think of poetry too, it is, it is the same case, or uh, maybe the poets move ahead of time to present, to depict the same idea, the same sense of or the Victorian, very sensibility of the Victorians, and they could at least know them, more than what the fiction writers could do in the, in the same period. And um, that is how Tennyson, as well as Browning, that we have discussed, their works try to address this and also try to, uh, to come up with a few solutions. And if it is personal with Browning, maybe. It is Tennyson who finds hope in the hopelessness and Browning uh, who, can, who seems to be or who comes out uh, with the characters uh, 
who might be taken up as the hopeless species, but he seems of hope, he seems of faith, or he is a true seeker in the sense where he questions everything and he doesn't doubt as any son could doubt. I am here to write a prologue to his own memory and as a as a simple poem to God to forgive him for all and the grief that he has really got to and not only for having doubted the faith that he had to live up with. So, coming back to these two writers um, and especially with Tennyson, we see that both of them use either myths or they go to the Middle Ages. So is the case with the uh, romantic uh, poets. And they also went to the olden times or history or so to say Middle Ages. And they came up with these characters from history. I will just take up a few cases or a few poems, few works by Tennyson to show you as to how historical characters of the Middle Ages are brought in, but they are realized. Or so to say, they are set into the Victorian times and how well they are used to present the writers and sensibility in their times. Going on to the Lady of Shalom, we will also have to think of a moment that lived for a little time in the, in the same age. We will just have a look at a moment that is known as pre-Raphaelite neighborhood. And all of you might have some idea of this brotherhood, pre-Raphaelite brotherhood. The pre-Raphaelite brotherhood is also known as the pre-Raphaelites in case of poetry. And it was a group of English painters and poets and critics that is founded in 1848 by John Edward Mears, who was a painter. And Dante, Gabriel, Rezzetti, and William Hyman Hunt. So these are the major poets, major painters who formed this group, and this group's intention was to reform art by rejecting what they considered to be mechanistic and approach adopted by minimalists. That is to follow Raphael and Michelangelo. They believed that the classical verses and elegant compositions of Raphael in particular had been corrupting. So it was a movement against, a group formed against the Raphaelite, and that is why it is called pre Raphaelite. And they objected the influence of uh, Ryan Reynolds, the founder of English Royal Academy of Arts, and they called him Sir Slosio, believing that his broad technique was sloppy and formulated for academic memories. And in contrast, they wanted to return to the abandoned detail. So this is the characteristics of the pre reference detailing. And we'll just have a look at a few pictures, and especially and especially we'll see as to what are a few Peculiarities or the characteristics of the pre reference. And detailing, as you will mark, is a marking feature of this pre reference. And this pre reference is in survived for just four or, or four or five years. And they had a their own general, which just came out for three months. So it was a shortly the moment. It is Gabriel um, Rosetti and Christine Rosetti who are the major poets. And maybe you will also be referring to these pre Raphaelite poets who have their, their mark in this particular age. So, um, the picture on your screen is of the Lady of Shalak. And if you mark the detailing in this particular picture, 
it is the lady who carries the ball. And more than that, the background that is provided in the painting, the accuracy of the water, the river, and of course the trees in the background, as well as the dress of Shala. And more than that, each and every straw of grass that is painted with accuracy. Tennyson has a work which is titled after the Lady of Shala. And it is published in the poems by in 1833, and which corresponds to the death of Lady of Ashkelos from undecreased love for her lancelating and melody. We will also take up this picture, where also it is once again a picture by Milas, and it is the Lady of Shala. So when we read this, keep these two pictures in our mind, and the first one here, and the Second one here is the lady of color who is looking out of the window. So it is a poem or a lyric poem, Lady of Color, as the title goes, and which is also painting by Millers, that is a pre red light. And pre red light painters who goes into detailing, let us see that how the master ladies, Tennyson, also puts this accuracy, this beauty in the picture, that is picture presented through words in poetry. And Lady of Shala is uh, considered one of the best lyrics by the music. And the painting and the poem, when we try to compare, when we see one and when we read one, we will realize that how Tennyson has been successful as a lyricist. Uh, I just uh, read the first stanza and uh, you will realize that how this lady of Shala, which is mysterious, if not mysterious, at least a character who is bound, who is cursed to not to look outside, outside her own house. And if she looks, she can look only through a mirror. And it is through mirror that she has been looking at the world. And she is not allowed just because of the curse. And if she looks out, then the mirror will break and that will bring an end to her life. So this is the curse that she is living with. A very tragic figure. And maybe this makes her very romantic a figure. Because a figure that is captured in a house because of her curse. So such a lady presented here, as we have seen in the picture, uh, in this stanza, the very first stanza, on either side the river lie, long fields of barley and the rye, they clothe the world and meet the sky and through the field and all things by. See the rhythm. See how well rhymed it is and how Tennyson has presented in between the river side. Barely face and through the field there, world runs by. So it's a picture of an island that is presented in the first part of that is part one of the poem as to where she is captured, where she is. And, and the repetitive line here to many tower, Tamala, and then after three lines. So it is uh, four and three lines each in a stanza. And with a repetitive fourth line, fifth line and the fourth line. The many power Kamala that rhymes with the island of Shala. So island of Shala is the rhyming repetitive line. Willows white and aspen clear, little breezes dust and shiver, through the way that runs forever by the island in the river, flying down the Kamala. So this is a beautiful picture of an island. And in this beautiful and uh, uh, natural uh, uh, presentation, you find this tragic figure. And by and by, what she looks at through her mirror is presented. But it is in part two that uh, we have uh, 
Lord Lancelot, all the year it is that the Red Cross Knight and so the medieval times I brought a life and you will mark that as you find the knights in the romances, there is a knight who approaches the same dwelling of Lady of Sela and how this beautiful lady captured a lady and under the first spell of a curse is affected by this very knight and the she wins by day and night and day the magic verb with colors gray gray and the picture here on the the second picture that we saw is a dwelling and it is here that she is wedding night and day she has had a whisper say to curse in her mind if she stay, this is the curse related to. The curse is on her if she stay to look down the camera. And this picture is where she for the first time looks down the camera. Right? To the camera. And she knows not what the curse may be. So this is the mystery. Even she doesn't know what the curse is. And so she even steadily and little other that she, the lady of Shala, and moving through the mirror clear. This is the mirror that she can look outside through the image. But times before her, all the year, shadows of the world appear. There she sees the highway near, winding down the tunnel. So, once again, winding down the tunnel. There the river, ready wheels, and there the early village falls. The broad stream. In his backs complaining heavily, the low sky raining. And down the river, dim expanse, and this we approach. Yeah. With this we approach it. The outside, that is what is outside the house of Lady of Shala. And mark this as to how this advance in the night will pass it. This passes by and Effects the lady of Shalab, a bow shot, a bow shot from her bow arrows, comes very close. Bow shot means at a distance where you can shoot a bow. A bow shot from the bow is in, he rode between the barley shoes. The sun came dazzling through the leaves and flamed upon the blazing breeze. And now these are the stones as worth marking as to what these will shine the entire is the Shoulders and the armories, the weapons are and presenting the image of the medieval times, the medieval knighthood, and the romantic figure of a knight, the right cross knight forever new to a lady in his shield. This is the shield of Lancelot or the red cross knight that sparkled on the yellow field beside him of Shalot. The yummy bridal glitter tree, like to some branch of stars we see. Even the people of the horse is studded with gems. Hung in the golden galaxy, the bridal bells in Mali as he brought down the camera. And once again, see how musical it is. How the knight rides on his horse, and how charming he is, how attractive he is, and what romantic a picture. And from his bows and ballad slung, the mighty silver tumbled him. See, the mighty silver tumbled him. And as he rode his armor from beside him of Shalat. So, beside him of Shalat. So, she is remembered. We noted at the first time that we are reminded of as to what he approaches. This attraction, this romantic figure approaches this him of Shalat. And all in blue and clothed leather, quickly dwell shone in saddler leather. The helmet and the helmet father burn like a burning flame together. And this is what the presentation is. And see the action. As soon as she looks at this knight, the figure of the knight in her mirror, and the reflection, or so to say, the image of the knight in the Mirror. As he rode down to Camelot, 
I will just keep a few stones from the blank, from the bank and from the river. We flash into the crystal mirror. So now this image of light flashes into the crystal mirror. Eva, Eva, Bido, Eva. Merrily singing, happily singing, and passing by. And this is what is the is flashed in the crystal mirror. Sun said, once more. Eva, Eva, Bido, Eva. Sun said, once more. She loved the girl, but the reason, but the face at least, things happen that she comes in action and leaves everything. The idea that she is under the spell of her is, and how fortunately she comes up. She loved the girl, she loved the loom. She made three paces through the room, and just with three paces, hurriedly she, for the first time in her life, forgetting the girls and leaving everything aside. Image that reflects everything that is worldly, that is outside her room. She saw the water lily bloom, she saw the helmet under bloom, she looked down the tunnel. And this is the last thing that she can do. She looked down the tunnel, which she was forbidden to do, which she was spellbound by the curse. Out flew the web and fluttered while the mirror crept from side to side. So, this particular the image is by the mirror breaks and she is looking outside the camera. Out through the web and fluttered while the mirror crack from side to side. The curse is come upon me cry the body of Shalak. And when she realizes that it is the and the remaining poem is all about her corpse that is being driven in the box and the picture that we have just seen before that was her seated, being seated in the box and preparing because the box had before and behind her and she swiftly is being flung into the river and she passes this night to have got together before the person and what the remark the gleaming shape she floated by, dead between the houses and silent into Kamala. Out upon the flat they came, night and birch and nod and me, and around the throw the red army, the lady of Shala. The name that she had written on her book, the lady of Shala. Who is this? And what is here? In the light of palace near, died the sun and royal cheer, and they crossed themselves for fear. All the nights of Kamala. So, finally, the corpse that is in the shell, covered with a white cloak, that passes by the nights, that Lancelot moves a little space, he says, she is a lovely face, God in his mercy, and the devils, the lady of Shala. This is what is the tragic end of the lady of Shala, who never miss her son, could marry meet the beloved at night. So from this work, maybe it is a very simple or if you want to just think of the story, reading the lyric, then the lady is anything, it's just a tragic figure of a lady, Shola, who is trapped because of a curse in her place. She cannot look outside. And once when the night happens to pass by her house, she could not resist. And at once, the curse will fall on her and she dies. This is a brief account of the tragic life of Shala. But other than that, uh, of course, it is recommended that many of the critics say that we should not stretch it into finding meanings of this beautiful piece of lyric. It's just a song. It's well done and one of the best outputs by Tanisa. In that case, if we try to find minutes, it wouldn't be worthwhile. But yet, many activities have tried to discuss this work so, by presenting the mirror and the cracking of the mirror. But we all, uh, when we think of the realistic presentations, that is, in case of artist, when he tries to, when he does not look at the world as real, he lives in his own world. It is as good as being first. That is very true of 
any artist that we do it in some way and is bound by that very world. He cannot look at the realities. And when he does, then it is the end. And that the creative process. So maybe we can think of this aspect that is trapped in the book. But most important is the lyric. And that is very basic. And that is how any song should be. And it is what's have to be regarded as great lyrics. Another work that uh, we eat of is the lotus eaters. And uh, all of us know that uh, one of the major works by Tennyson, they start by the fact that his friend was Ulysses. And Ulysses is a figure, uh, a great hero who is returning from the beginning of the great work. And he's very bad. And even at the age of 80, he encourages his soldiers to go ahead. And um, he represents the great heroic age of the Greek. I just mark a line from Ulysses that translates the hard and sleep and feed and do not me. So even at the age of 80, he says that feeding and sleep and rest. You know, not me. I cannot rest from travel. I will bring life to the knees. So he wants to leave life to the end. And want to go on and on. So this is what you find in the poem Ulysses by the same writer. But it is the latter cities which once again will bring us very close to the decay. And as in case of what is the influence of the previous life. As well as what the master is to use the lyrics. The latter it is also as Ulysses, and Ulysses is a major figure, and on the way back from the great work, we have just one. But the soldiers were fatigued, were tired, and were being long away from home. So, naturally, they want to reach home back. To the family, to the children, to the motherland, and they meet so so many adventures, which is part of Homer's Odysseus. So this piece, Lotus, is a it is is taken from the old Greek epic, that is Odysseus by Homer. And in the very first line, courage, he said, he is the Ulysses. Here. So courage, he said, and pointed towards the land. This mountain wave will roll us forward soon. So this talks of their readiness, their being men of action, who always going ahead and say, and it is the same Ulysses who comes with his crew and with his ship, and also morally as well as a man who can take them ahead back to the land. In the afternoon, they come into a land in which it seems always afternoon. And now we are brought into the atmosphere. And what this remarkable work, that is the lotus eaters, has to be really taken note of is for the atmosphere that Tennyson is here able to create. And going back to the Odyssey, it is an island where it is all drowsy. You do not feel like doing anything. No one does anything. And there are just a few huge dynamic figures whom you find. A demon, so to say. And Ulysses meets a one-eyed demon guy in the Rahi Island. And demons also don't go out and do. They just lead a life of lethargy. And the way the island influences the crew is what is central in this poem, the water cities. But how he has been able to create this is worth noting. So in the afternoon, this is the very second line. In the afternoon, they came into a land in which it seems always afternoon. So in, it's in the afternoon and it is always afternoon. It's not morning. And afternoon means that sluggishness after it is halfway in the day. When the sun has already 
Review, written, normal. So this is the symbol. This is the effect. Review, written, normal. I am gone. As far beyond the way. Review, no longer gone. So, no longer will be gone. And then the whole of the poem, the remaining part of the work, that is the letters, it is. We mark that it is part of goddess. And part of goddess is also part of the epic form. So, here, all together, the crew sings in the chorus. And how well they do as to what, how greatly they are influenced by the letters, it is high end. And in such a situation as this line, we will no longer run. They are the runners, they are the wanderers, and they are the people who have taken up the adventure. And this is a return, returning home, but they forget their children, their wives, their fatherland, and they simply are in such a state of slumber that they remain. And uh, we take some time to read this. The sweet music here, the softer falls, the petals from the long roses of the grass, the mighty dew still, waters between walls of shady granite and gleaming pass, music of gentle and the spirit life. And this is what all effects. So whatever is around, that also effects them physically and mentally. Here are cool houses deep. And the basic question, if we just shift to the second part of chorus, we will mark that. Why are we weighed upon the heaviness? And what is this heaviness? And the utterly consumed with sharp distress. While all things also rest from heaviness, all things are rest, why should we toil along? This is a big question for the man of action, or even in case of the heart or even in case of the Victoria Day, which is in a rest to towards the industrial and all other developments. So we are toiling day and night. We do not know what we are heading to. And so is the case with this crew. And maybe tension might be also considered in the same that while all things also also rest from weariness, all things are lost, why should we toil? We only toil who are the first of things and make perpetually long. So thinking that it is man who dies all the time and God knows why. So, um, to tell that it is only we who die on the country or on the other land, mm-hmm. so still from one sorrow to another town, not our fault are being. So, they have been so busy, 10 years, 10, ten long years of death on the battlefield, always in action, and how to that when to reach their place, there is no joy but calm. Why should we only toil? It is fun, calm of things. And so why should we go on? So this is for the time being, or for a shorter period, that they are in such a state. So let us along. And that's a part of the third stanza. That let us along. What is it that will last? And so everything in this modern world, let us along. So don't care. Tell us to be in action always. What is it that will last? All things are taken from us and we can portions and partials of the dreadful past. Let us alone. So let us alone. Let us have some rest. What pleasure can we have to war with evil? Even if it was war against evil, then what is it? What meaning does it have? What pleasure it is? Is there any peace in our climbing up the climbing wave? All things are rest, ripen towards the way. So this is how it is taken as once again, as in nature. And if we learn from nature, which Tanisha Tanisha could observe very closely, there is the influence. All things are rest, ripen towards the way. In silence, ripen, fall and cease. Give us longer rest of the bad, beautiful peace. So maybe this uh, short understanding of a few works by Tennyson as well as Browning will give you some idea as to how to approach the Victorian age when we consider the poets a major work in the form of poetry. And 
maybe your study, with the study of these two writers, that is Browning and Tennyson, who are representatives of who are the major writers, Victorian poets, and to an encompass the whole of the age, except for the tail end of the Victorian age. I'm sure that the study of Browning as well as Tennyson will give you a very good idea into the study of fiction too, because they are quite using the same techniques of the romantics, the same influence of the romantic, but they are addressing the lead and they are trying to find the solutions in the um, going back to uh, in memory especially. It is all about, it's not just personal, as Tennyson himself has uh, stated, but you cannot take it as my personal belief. It is, uh, it is something that is seen for the humanity. You have to take it as a whole. But it seems for the age. And this was a common uh, confusion and doubt of the age that Tennyson is addressing. And most of the aspects here to the shorter works also, you will find that they are much concerned about the basic idea, either in case of Brahmin, whether it is the physical world or the soul that one needs to really do importance to, and how to make or how to think of a balance between the two. And so is the case with Brahmin, and it is in memory that whole work that we Ends from the beginnings in grief and ends in a happy marriage. Now it's the enjoyment of life that Tennyson himself could go into drinking and merry making and celebrating not only marriage but life as a whole. But how to accept life as it is and with what understanding and how this understanding can develop. So this is in a way, a process that we go through in human memory and other poets that bring us very close to um, the age the uh, Victorians that are at times misunderstood or maybe over criticized. And of course, uh, the influence of the age that uh, took shape in case of scientific as well as industrial developments had to be addressed by the modern times and it is the modern times which has been able to discuss it and maybe it is the modern critics who have been able to evaluate the Victorians better than the reading public and the contemporary critics of the time. In the end, I would also make a mention of Tennyson and Tony as not only the tail enders in case of the romantics, but also who mark the beginning of the modern poetry. And there are many places that you will find in their works when we read. Thank you. 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 Thank you.